epidemiology team focuses on finding cases of infectious disease and limiting its spread. Right now what that means is anytime that we find a confirmed case of COVID-19 or a probable case of COVID-19, we're calling that person and trying to see where they got it from and where all they might have spread. So that investigation looks at any person that came in contact with our positive case 48 hours prior to the person becoming symptomatic and then any person after the symptoms develop. What we do from there is we call each one of the people who came in contact with the case and we ask them how their symptoms are, if they have any symptoms, and we follow up with those folks for 14 days. So uh, what our team does with the cases is they isolate a case. An official isolation order is given to each case, which prohibits anyone from leaving or coming into the house. For every case contact, they are put under an official quarantine. So they're not allowed to leave the house and no one's allowed to come into their house for 14 days after their last exposure. Each person that gets put under isolation quarantine is an official isolation or quarantine by law. These, uh, all these people get a letter from the health district instructing them that they must stay in their house and that they cannot allow anyone else to be in the house. Uh, usually these letters are enough to get cooperation. Should someone violate quarantine or isolation, we have the ability to station quarantine guards at their house to make sure that no one comes in or leaves the pro property. So our team does a lot with following cases and case contacts. The next thing that they do is they monitor each one of these cases and these case contacts, each one of these isolations and these quarantines during their entire isolation and quarantine. And that means calling them pretty much daily to see how they're doing, see how their symptoms are going, see if they need anything. Um, our team has uh, dropped off medications for people. We've um, brought them thermometers, anything that'll help them be able to stay inside their home. Uh, the team also makes uh, field visits to homes. Sometimes we don't have a phone number or sometimes we don't have a person who will uh, talk to us on the phone. So there are times when our epidemiology team has to go out to a house or an apartment or a complex and find the person that is infectious. Uh, while we're doing this, our team is dressing in full PPE uh, to go to potentially um, infectious sites. So this would be a person that may need to go under quarantine or isolation. Uh, so we go in teams of two to these sites. Uh, we have one uh, hot zone responder and one cold zone responder. Um, the hot zone responder goes up and does an interview with the potentially infectious person and the cold zone uh, person is a spotter there to make sure that the hot zone person is putting on all the PPE, taking off all the PPE correctly to make sure that we're not exposing ourselves to this disease as well. Once they're out on site, the same thing happens there is they're going to interview that case and find out who all might have come in contact with them. Typically our disease control and response team consists of public health nurses and epidemiologists. It's usually a team of six. During COVID-19 operations we've had to expand that team to about 25 people and we've brought in our sanitarians, we've brought in community health specialists, uh, people from all over the agency that don't typically deal with communicable disease or infectious disease are on the team because it's an all hands on deck approach here at the health district to make sure that we're protecting the community. And those folks who may not normally be talk talking to uh, people who have an infectious disease are making those calls, are going out to visit those folks who, who need help out there. To respond to COVID-19, um, we've implemented some uh, different things here at the health district. We now operate from 7 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. We have rapid response teams that are available 24-7, and we do operate seven days a week. Um, we have some folks who are working 12-hour shifts at a time. We have other folks who are working six-hour shifts at a time. Uh, we do this for two reasons. One is to make sure that we're maintaining consistency, but also is to limit our exposure uh, in case we was to get a staff member who develops COVID-19. We can also limit that exposure by having them working al uh, alternative or different shifts. If you come across someone who says that they have COVID-19 and have been put in isolation or quarantine, you can ask them for, for the letter from us. Each person who's put under isolation or quarantine will have a letter from us, and they will also have a letter that tells them when they are out of isolation or quarantine. These letters serve multiple purposes. One is to prevent anyone from coming or going from the house, but it also is something that they can give to their employer to let the employer know that they um, can't go to work. 
um, or anyone else who needs to see them, they can produce this letter to anyone to show them that they are officially isolated and quarantined.